Welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the last week. Despite being a holiday week, there's still a lot of news to cover, including some stuff on, briefly, Ice Lake and Whiskey Lake from Intel. And there's also, allegedly, a GTX 1060 5 gigabyte card now for the fourth variant of GTX 1060s. Along with some news on the ASUS 1080Ti Strix PCB changes that have been discussed, uh, NVIDIA's ban of GeForce cards in data centers, and then some AMD news as well. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by SiliconLottery.com. Silicon Lottery offers delitting services and also pre-bins CPUs. This includes determining what sort of clocks the CPU can achieve at different voltages, and then they provide you the option to buy those different bins of CPUs if you're in search of something specific. To learn more, check out SiliconLottery.com or click on the link in the description below. Preceding our first news item, just a quick update. We have a $5 Patreon tier that gives you behind the scenes vlogs that we started doing the last couple weeks. So the second one of those just went live on the side channel. All of the Patreon backers at $5 and up can see it. You can just go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, log in, and you'll find the link there. So that's stated. Uh, oh, and I should also notice, note that uh, Snowflake started in it briefly with this Corsair ornament. So Cor Corsair sent a, a, a shiny tree ornament with their logo and RGB everything, and it was wrapped in an RGB... Uh, ribbon, I guess. It was all, everything was RGB from Corsair this year. Uh, so first news item pertains to memory prices. Over the last, uh, it feels like a year or two at this point, we've been talking about how memory prices are making it really a lot more expensive than it ever has needed to be to get into PC gaming, to the point where we're seeing prices that are up 120% from what they were roughly a year ago. And that's been bad news for PC gaming and PC building. The newest information out of that front, though, is that China's National Development and Reform Commission, or NDRC, is reportedly looking into the possibility of DRAM price fixing between the major memory and flash suppliers with specific interest from the Pricing Supervision Department of that commission. So an official from the regulatory body told the China Daily, which is a state-run paper, quote, we have noticed the price surge and will pay more attention to future problems that may be caused by, quote, price fixing in the sector, end quote on that one. So this follows Samsung's plans to, again, allegedly increase their supply by 20% from earlier this year, just a couple months ago, and that still would have failed to meet rising demand. The NDRC told the China Daily that the company has paid attention to DRAM pricing and NAND pricing over the last 18 months, and that the memory suppliers are now under the eye of the NDRC. In fact, Samsung has reportedly already had conversations with the NDRC, and that's according to the Secretary General of Mobile China Alliance. At this time, there have been no actions taken against any of the four major memory suppliers. That would include SK Hynix, Micron, Toshiba, and Samsung, but it's something that the Chinese government regulatory body is looking into. So. We'll keep an eye on that one and see if it goes anywhere. One more thing though, this isn't the first time that the memory industry has been looked into for price fixing. In fact, the first time they were looked at for price fixing, uh, there was actual collusion found on fixing the prices of memory. So we'll see if they've learned anything. NVIDIA is reportedly readying a GTX 1060 5 gigabyte model. This, if it comes to be, and it, it looks like it is legitimate at this point, will be the fourth GTX 1060 that NVIDIA has created. However, it's not targeted for DIY PC builders, so basically any of us, and it is also not really targeted at markets outside of Asia. So this is something that is, from what we've read thus far from XP Review, a Chinese language uh, news outlet, it looks like this GTX 1065 gigabyte card is meant for internet cafes, PC banes, things like that in China or potentially Korea and other Asian markets. Uh, the card is a little bit different than just the VRAM, so it also will have a slightly reduced memory bus width. It's going to be 160 bits rather than 192, which goes hand in hand with five gigabytes. Uh, it's still 1280 CUDA cores, whereas the 1063 gigabyte was 1152 CUDA cores. And the other 1060, if you're wondering, was the 1066 gigabyte with faster memory. So, uh, some of those cards are starting to kind of pop up online already, but that's 
that's what it looks like they're doing. Now, if you want to think about why this might be the case, there's obviously a huge market in China and Asia for this type of device, but is it a market that exceeds or uh, it, does it exceed what is already provided by the 1066 and three gigabyte cards? I don't know. Maybe there's that much demand, but uh, this is the kind of thing that you'd potentially make if you ha if the extra one gigabyte difference has enough cost savings to really be worth it, but three gigabytes is like going too far. It's really weird. It's this, this is like extreme product segmentation they're doing. To be fair, not targeted at PC enthusiasts, but still, it's, it's interesting. We'll see what happens. Maybe it's some kind of silicon binning thing or they've just got a bin of chips that have partly defective memory controllers or something like that. Uh, next news item though. So hardware info is one of the best tools for measuring really anything in your computer. Sensors, all that stuff. Hardware Info 64, it's a free software utility. We use it for logging a lot of uh, thermal and voltage numbers and it's been historically pretty accurate and reliable even before products launch, which is something that can't always be said about a lot of other monitoring solutions on the market. So Hardware Info's latest 5.7 update has resolved a couple of things and has added some interesting items. One of them is that it's added support for Ice Lake and Whiskey Lake, which we'll come back to in a moment. And it's also resolved some of Vega's thermal monitoring bugs that popped up with the latest Radeon adrenaline drivers that came out, 17.11.2. So those should hopefully be resolved by now. They have further added or updated Raven Ridge support on the AMD side and Pinnacle Ridge support. And it's also adding correct TJ Maxx reporting for Zeppelin dies, which will be nice as well. Uh, TJ Maxx being the maximum temperature, junction temperature before a uh, CPU thermal event. That's typically thermal shutdown or thermal throttling, depending on how your motherboard is configured. The 400 series chipset support is not yet added despite some news posts. Uh, it is going to be added for the next release though, so it's on the way. And this will become relevant toward the beginning of second quarter 2018, end of first quarter, somewhere in there. As for Ice Lake and Whiskey Lake support, uh, these are looking to be relevant in 2018. And after these, you can expect that uh, after Ice Lake comes Water Lake, which is what you get when you add Intel's TIM to Ice Lake. And uh, after Whiskey Lake, I think is coming Gatorade Lake. So keep an eye out for those. Those will be very important processor launches in uh, 2032. Uh, the next one, Titan V support was added as well. Tom's hardware further noticed that Hardware Info 64 added Intel's multi-core turbo bins. So this is something that you could previously find in PTU, their power thermal testing utility, uh, or other developer tools, but now it's being exposed through a more consumer available software solution. And that will give you a table like we had the chart on our 8700K coverage, where you can see the bins for what frequency you can expect to operate at for how many cores or threads are engaged. Uh, and that can be fetched directly through Hardware Info. We were pointed toward this next news item from a couple of people in the Twitter and Patreon communities. So several people contacted us over an EK Waterblocks message about the ASUS 1080Ti Strix card that received critical acclaim from our outlet this year. The ASUS card has undergone a PCB change that requires EK Waterblocks to rework their cooler design, and that's if the company wishes to continue the support of this PCB. This kind of feeds back to where we try to bring some level-headedness to the situation. First of all, not a big deal. Uh, but secondly, whenever any kind of change happens to a product, you'll get a uh, sort of discussion that makes it sound as if it's an evil change or something where they're trying to take something away from you. In all likelihood, and this is very common for PCBs to be reworked without a major announcement, in all likelihood, ASUS probably had a supply side change, maybe some component they were sourcing is no longer available because some other factor in the market spun up and started taking them, or that company might have stopped making that particular component, uh, or it could just be they found that there's a better way to make whatever it is they reworked. We're not sure what that is just yet. But either way, it's a PCB change, it's not a cooler change or anything like that. And apparently it was enough where EK's blocks are not compatible with the 1080 Ti in its new form. So uh, EK is warning that models made after mid-November are affected. They have a list of serial numbers that are affected. You can check your card to make sure it is or is not. And this is, we're not sure yet 
if EK is going to use this to step away from the line or if they're going to continue making stuff for the 10 ATI Strix and just modify it to fit the new one. We contacted ASUS about this and haven't yet heard back. It's probably because everyone's out of office for the holidays. Uh, and we also talked to Buildzoid about it, who is aware of the change, but didn't have any further information about it at this time. So that's all we know about that one. Basically, uh, this kind of feeds into why when media outlets or when users ask a company, hey, what MOSFETs are on there, they won't answer. It's the same thing Logitech or mouse companies do. What, sent or what, uh, what switches are you using? They won't answer. The reason for that is not because they're necessarily trying to hide something, but because their supply could change and they don't want to be held to that statement later if supply changes because you're not just going to kill the whole product line and start a new one. That wouldn't make much sense for something where you can source a similar switch with the same spec and things like that just from a different supplier. So uh, we're not sure what the change was though. It could be more extreme than that or it might be nothing. But we'll wait for a comment from Asus. Next one, NVIDIA bans GeForce in data centers. So there's nothing, there's nothing alleged or reported about this. It just is. This is what happen, what's happening. NVIDIA's new end user license agreement has been updated to contain the following quote. No data center deployment, period. Pretty cut and dry there. It also says the software is not licensed for data center deployments. This is referring to the driver package, except that blockchain processing in a data center is permitted. So this protects cryptocurrency miners operating in data center environments with a lot of GeForce cards, interestingly. But it impacts potentially enterprise clients, although those are mostly going to be on Teslas anyway, uh, or more likely universities, academics, and researchers who might not have the budget or the need to go with something like a Tesla or a Quadro card where you have professional level certifications and guarantees, uh, which have different liability protections attached to them. It's more likely going to affect those universities, academics, people like that. So this is basically dictating how the cards can be used, but to a point where they're allowing it for cryptocurrency mining. It's almost like they said, well, we can't institute this change for cryptocurrency miners. That's not fair. They bought a lot of cards. But universities, yeah, they can afford Teslas and Quadros. Uh, it, it's basically, it's trying to force the market into adopting the higher tier cards that are more intended for these use cases. Now, whether this is a valid move uh, from a support standpoint, things like that, legal standpoint, I'm not really sure at this time, but it's definitely further market segmentation. Uh, it is going to affect independent or uh, university or academic researchers the most, and uh, they're not going to be able to leverage GeForce cards in the same way if they want to continue receiving NVIDIA support. So that's kind of the situation those people are in. However, if they're, they say, screw all of this cancer research, let's start mining coins, then they're apparently protected. So it's a, it's a very odd thing that NVIDIA has carved out here. They, they almost could have had a support leg to stand on with just a blanket ban of GeForce cards in a data center environment. Maybe. But if it's like, Blanket ban, but those cryptocurrency miners are fine. Kind of taking away the support leg. It's a little bit of a weird decision there. Uh, it, it has not been received well online, and I don't know that it's a great decision in general. The next one here, so this is the AMD 400 series chipset news. AMD 400 series chipset was spotted on the PCI SIG integrators devices list. And this just means that we know a little bit more about how the chipset is connecting to the CPU and its uh, other changes that are accompanied by that. Those include a change to the general purpose PCIe lanes. So AMD is moving away from eight lanes PCIe Gen 2 towards eight lanes PCIe Gen 3. The general purpose lanes are, this exists on Intel as well. They can be assigned to pretty much whatever the motherboard maker wants to use them for. You can assign them to a PCIe device, maybe a BI4 device. You can assign them to M.2, to Gigabit, Ethernet, to USB, to a whole bunch of SATA or U2 ports, things like that. So that's been changed uh, just up to Gen 3, which will give them a bit more bandwidth to work with. So you can use fewer lanes to accomplish the same goal with an M.2 device 
or you could run 32, you could run faster M.2 devices on it as well. This is going to be on the next generation Ryzen launch. It's going to be a plus generation. We are calling it Ryzen Plus right now. We're not sure what AMD is going to call it. It may end up being called Ryzen 2. However, don't confuse that with Zen 2 architecture, which isn't releasing for some time. So could potentially be confusing there. We are calling it Ryzen Plus for that reason. And finally, Opera implemented mining protections in their web browser. Opera is one of the older web browsers and one of the best ones. So back when I used Opera, when you paid 10 or $20 for it, you bought it on a disc. And uh, now it's free, of course, but Opera has a no-coin web mining extension that prevents mining from websites. Like, for example, we recently saw the hardware bot forums do mining when you visit the site. This is something that sites are doing now instead of ads. Uh, so Opera's got a tool in there to prevent that if you're worried about that. Sales for this week, the Logitech C920 was $50, marked down from the usual 100-ish price point for the webcam. This is the webcam we've used for some interviews in the past. And there's also an AOC C408VU8 monitor, which is a 40-inch 4K curved display, 10-bit color, 5 millisecond gray to gray. That's been on sale in multiple locations for $600 as well. Those are all worth looking into. If you want to look into any of them, click the links for them in the description below. Or as always, you can subscribe for more. You can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get our behind the scenes videos. Or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our mod mats. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.